welcome to a tutorial today looking at Twixter, the plugin Twixter. This is the plugin 4.5, Twixter 4.5 for Final Cut Pro. Um, I would probably recommend using Twixter in After Effects. It's a little bit easier to do keyframing than working with it within Final Cut, but most of my students have been using Twixter within Final Cut, so I'm just going to hopefully do a quick ish tutorial on how to get it to work in Twixter. Sorry, Final Cut. So what we need to do is uh, first we've got our footage here, so we're just going to, this is the section we're going to create our slow motion on, this piece here. This was shot by some of my students and we're going to use that small chair area as our slow motion Twixter effect. This was shot on a Canon 7D and it was shot at 60 frames a second. So what we need to do is we need to go and first we want to change the original footage from 60 frames to 24 frames. This will be a kind of first initial slow motion. So it will slow down the content to 20 from 60 frames to 24 frames. So let's get started on that. Let's move into Cinema Tools, this is where we can do it. So continue. And we don't need a database, so we can cancel. So we can go File, Open Clip. Find our three clips. Obviously we just do one by one here because it's a bit easier. Open. We're going to conform this from 59.94 to 24. I mean, I'm using 24, but you can use 30, 29.97, 25, etc. I'm just using 24 because I like 24, it's easy. And hit conform. Now before you hit conform, I would recommend that you back up your original source file to another folder. I've already done this, mine is over here, we can see the three files there. So hit conform, and there we go, that's now changed from 59.94 into 24. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to use this clip, but let's conform it anyway. And the next one, the third and final one, is the back feet shot. And let's conform and conform. And there we go. There's our three clips now conformed from 60 frames or 59.94 into 24. So let's just quickly have a look. So this was six seconds. We can see here the duration is six seconds. And the new duration of the clip here is... 15 seconds. All right, excellent. So that has conformed it to slightly more than double in duration. So let's just import these. There's our clips, and we've inserted these clips into here already. So we won't bother. There's we can do them if they want. There's our in point out point, and our second, our in point out point, and our third in point out point for our ending shot, which is fine. So what we want to do now is we want to find the actual spot that we're going to work with for our slow motion. So I'm going to go from about here. So in this case, I'm going to make a cut point in my timeline. Let's play it forward. And let's go to about here using there and cut point there. So this is my kind of extreme slow motion point that I'm going to work with. So what I need to do in Final Cut, it's not like, not complicated or anything, but it's a little bit different to how you can do it in After Effects. So, I'm going to now take a copy of this, so Command C, I'm going to go to my browser and hit Command N and type in slow motion Twix in here. I'm going to press enter to bring me to my new sequence, my slow motion sequence. Now what is really important is, because we're going to make a kind of nest sequence, is we need to match these two sequences. So there's our original sequence here. This is command zero will show you, 24 frames. So let's go to our slow motion sequence. And the easiest way of doing it is to, just to drop in the same content into the sequence. It should now, then you can delete it, command zero, and it's 24. Perfect. So they're now matching. So what we're going to do is we're going to paste the content that we've just copied from our original sequence into our timeline, our nest sequence. So this is probably enough, probably about 20 seconds is okay, but you know, it doesn't hurt to do any more. 
let's then move to our original sequence. There's our original sequence. So we can delete this section because we want to get rid of this. There it goes. And let's take our nested sequence, slow motion Twix. This is our sequence. And let's insert that into our gap. Now we can delete the audio because we don't need it. I know it's going to say render the audio. So let's just render that very quickly because it's, it's just going to sit there as red. And let's pull it down. Maybe we're going to look at about five seconds of slow motion, something like that. So we're going to move that, and obviously we would need to then amend our audio, but whatever. We're not too fast. Actually, I'm going to delete the audio. Okay. So this is our slow motion section, our nested slow motion section. So now we can go ahead and select this, go up to our effects and our video filters, our revision plugin and Twix to 4.5. This is what we're using in Final Cut. Hit the button and it comes up as rendered. That's why we need to render that later, but we haven't done anything. Now, if I double click this nest, this sequence, it's just going to take me back to my sequence. So, the easiest way and only the way we're going to work with the filter is just hit the return key on the keyboard and it jumps into our viewer. So now we can see our Twixter effect here. So we've got our filter. There's our filter. So our output, we're not going to touch our output. We're not going to touch any of these others here. Motion vectors is best. We don't really worry about this. We could put that on if we want, but I don't bother. Motion sensitivity is fine. Our speed is fine. So that's what we're going to work with. I'll come back to that. Our frame interpretation, now because we've got some motion going on in this, as we can see the feet move and the chair moves and stuff, we want a motion weighted blend on this. So we're going to blend that and we're going to click Smart Blend so it works with these sections of the feet and the chair and it blends them nicely together. Well, we hope it blends them nicely together. Now our speed, depending on what speed we want it to look at, I'm going to select 25, and I'm going to work from 25%, and hit tab. Now I need to render this, so I will render this, and then we will come back once we are rendered. Okay, so we have rendered out. Um, I've moved a few things around after I finished the render, and I actually I extended this track because it was about here I think originally I just extended it out a little bit to have a bit more of an effect so the next thing is I'll drop this on the end there's our ending and let's just take a quick look at that from that point to see our slow motion effect looks pretty good very nice there we go so that's 25 percent this is working at so obviously it was originally the hundred percent that we saw which would have been 24 frames. This has now gone on 25% of 24 frames. And there's our ending. So I think this is quite a nice effect we're getting here. There's no motion, there's no blurring. It looks pretty good. I'm very happy with the effect. It looks quite nice, very subtle. There's no blurring or any, any um, funny areas around the feet or the movement of the chair which sometimes you can get with uh, plugins if there's too much motion going on but I think it looks really nice and looks good so there we go so we have basically looked at using Twixter in Final Cut I uh, probably would recommend trying to use it in After Effects keyframing is a little bit easier than having to nest and all these other elements that you have to do in Final Cut to get what you want. But anyway, if you have got it in Final Cut and you want to use it in Final Cut, this is how you can put it together. And it works quite nicely. Um, and again, this was shot on the Canon 7D, 60 frames. Then we conformed it in Cinema Tools down to 24, pulled it in, added our, made our little edit, and then added our Twixter plugin. And there you go. So if you've got any questions, please feel free to write. If you want any other sort of tutorials done, then please also feel free to write. Um, I will come back at some other time with 
probably a coloring tutorial will be next, uh, maybe DaVinci or something like that. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you next time.